Hello, today's lesson is about neonatal cholestasis. Cholestasis is failure of bilirubin secretion resulting in conjugated hyperbilirubinemia and jaundice. Cholestasis occurs in 1 in 2,500 full-term infants. It is defined as direct bilirubin more than 1 mg per dl. And cholestasis is never normal and it needs evaluation and management. When we see theology of neonatal cholestasis, cholestasis might result from extrahepatic or intrahepatic disorders, also some conditions overlap. To start the extrahepatic cause of cholestasis first, the most common extrahepatic disorder that causes cholestasis in neonates is biliary atresia, which, whose incidence is about 1 in 10,000 newborns. Biliary atresia is obstruction of the biliary tree due to progressive sclerosis of the extrahepatic bile duct. In most cases, biliary atresia manifests several weeks after birth, probably after inflammation and the scarring of the extrahepatic and sometimes therapeutic bile ductus. It is rarely present in premature infants or in neonates at birth. The cause of inflammatory response is unknown, but several infectious organisms have been implicated, including Heovirus type 3 and cytomegalovirus. Biliary cysts are another cause of neonatal cholestasis, it rarely manifests as neonatal cholestasis, and the cysts are more common among patients with autosomal receive cholestic kidney disease. The other is inspissated bile duct syndrome, which can also be a cause of extrabiotic neonatal cholestasis and is more common among infants with cystic fibrosis. The second one is intrahepatic cause of cholestasis. Intrahepatic cause can be infectious, alloimmune, metabolic or genetic or toxic. From infectious causes that cause cholestasis, viral, bacterial, including gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria, mainly urosepsis and intra-abdominal infections are the most common cause of bacterial cause of cholestatic jaundice in newborns. From parasitic, toxoplasmosis can also cause intrahepatic cause of cholestasis. The other cause of intrahepatic cholestasis in newborns include gestational alloimmune liver disease. This involves transplacental passage of maternal IgG that induces a complement-mediated membrane attack complex that injures the fetal liver. The other is metabolic causes. This includes numerous inborn errors of metabolism. And the others are additional genetic defects such as allergic syndrome, cystic fibrosis, and also arteriogryposis renal dysfunction cholestasis syndrome. Toxic causes of intrahepatic cholestasis are due mainly to the use of prolonged parenteral nutrition in extremely preterm neonates or infants with short bowl syndrome. Idiopathic neonatal hepatic syndrome, which is giant cell hepatitis, is an inflammatory condition of the neonatal liver. Regarding pathophysiology of neonatal cholestasis, in cholestasis, the primary failure is of bilirubin excretion. So this results in excess conjugated bilirubin in the bloodstream and decreased bile salts in the GI tract. As a result of inadequate bile in the GI tract, there is malabsorption of fat and fat-soluble vitamins, such as A, D, and K. This leads to vitamin deficiency, inadequate nutrition or malnutrition, and gross failure. When we see symptoms and the signs of neonatal cholestasis, cholestasis typically is noted around the first two weeks of life. Infants are jaundiced and often have dark urine containing conjugated bilirubin, alcoholic stools, and hepatomegaly. In cholestasis, if the persistence causes chronic pruritus, and this is a symptoms and the signs of fat soluble vitamin deficiency, and this progresses to gross failure and decline in gross charges on the gross curve. If the underlying disorder causes hepatic fibrosis and cirrhosis, portal hypertension with subsequent abdominal distension result from ascites, dilated abdominal veins, and also aperia bleeding resulting from esophageal virus might develop. Diagnosis of neonatal cholestasis needs being total and redirected bilirubin, liver function test, tests for metabolic infectious or genetic causes, and liver ultrasonography and also hepatobiliary scan. And occasionally, biopsy of liver, operative cholangiography, and genetic testing are needed. Cholestasis is identified by elevation in both total and direct bilirubin. 
but the direct should be more than one to say it's cholestasis. Abdominal ultrasonography is often the first imaging test to be done. It is non invasive and the canasus liver size, certain abnormalities of the gold bladder and the combined ducts. However, it's not specific. A hepatobiliary scan using HIDA scan should also be done. In this case, if there is excretion of contrast into the intestine, it rules out biliary atresia. And if there is lack of excretion, it can occur with biliary atresia, sever neonatal hepatitis, and the other cause of cholestasis. So, excretion of contrast into the intestine rules out biliary atresia in the case of hepatobiliary scan using HIDA scan. When no diagnosis has been made, a liver biopsy is sometimes needed. Regarding treatment of neonatal cholestasis, a specific treatment is directed at the cause. For example, if the cause is infectious or sepsis, appropriate management is needed. If the cause is biliary atresia, a portoenterostomy or case procedure should be done, ideally during the first one to two months of life, and after this period, because the short-term prognosis significantly worsens. So, if this biliary atresia it should be diagnosed early and the intervention or surgical procedure should be done during the first two months of life. And if the cause is gestational or low immune liver disease, IVIG is needed. If there is no specific therapy, treatment is supportive and it consists of nutritional therapy including supplements of fat soluble vitamins, adequate calories. In infants, they need more than 130 calories per kg per day. And also, in infants with some bile flow, pure sodioxychoic acid, 10 to 15 mg per kg once or twice a day might relieve itching. So this is supportive management. Overall, when we see the prognosis for neonatal cholestasis, biliary atresia is progressive and if untreated, it results in liver failure, cirrhosis with portal hypertension by several months of age and death by one year of age. Prognosis of cholestasis due to specific disorders such as metabolic disease is variable. It ranges from complete benign course to progressive disease resulting in cirrhosis. Idiopathic neonatal hepatic syndrome usually resolves slowly, but permanent liver damage might result and it might lead to liver failure and also death. Gestational and low immune liver disease has a poor prognosis without early intervention. So this is all about neonatal cholestasis. Thank you for watching.